Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From finding the lost land of Punt to a silver face mask in a mummy workshop, here are 10 amazing discoveries from ancient Egypt. Number 10. Mummified Baboons For centuries, the ancient Egyptians imported and mummified captive baboons. Some of these primates likely worked as service animals and to show off wealth, while others were used in the worship of Toth, a god who is sometimes depicted as having a baboon's head. It's not the baboons themselves, but where they come from that intrigued primatologist and anthropology professor Nathaniel Domini. The Egyptians described importing baboons from Punt, he explained in an interview with Life Science. Was Punt real or a myth? There is ample evidence to suggest that Punt was a real place. Egyptian records describe it as the land of their ancestors and praise its abundance of trade goods including resin, gold, ebony, ivory, and wild animals. But experts have never been able to figure out exactly where Punt was, until now perhaps. Domini worked with a team of scientists to analyze the isotopes in modern-day baboons and compare them with information gleaned from seven mummified specimens in hopes of determining their origins, which would then theoretically lead them to Punt. Two of the mummified baboons date back to the New Kingdom period, between 1520 BC and 1075 BC, and the other five are from after 332 BC, during the Ptolemaic period. While the more recent mummified baboons appear to have been captively bred, the older New Kingdom baboons came from an area encompassing parts of modern-day Eritrea, Ethiopia, and Somalia. Punt existed in the southern Red Sea region, very likely on the coasts of Eritrea and Somaliland, Domini said. While this assertion is unproven, all signs point toward it being accurate, bringing researchers one step closer to solving the long-standing mystery of the legendary land of Punt. Number 9. Ram-Headed Sphinx and Flooded Tomb In early 2019, archaeologists and workers uncovered an 11.5-foot-tall statue of a ram-headed sphinx at the Gabel el Silsila site near Aswan. The sandstone carving dates back over 3,000 years and was found in an ancient workshop. Experts are unsure why the statue was left there, but they believe it may have been a cancelled order, according to archaeologist Maria Nilsson, the director of the site's excavation. She explained in a Life Science interview that the Sphinx was likely carved at the end of Amenhotep III's reign. He was King Tut's grandfather and may have commissioned the sculpture, but it was cancelled and abandoned when he died. Situated along the Nile riverbanks, Gebel el Silsila was both a rock quarry and a home for the quarry's workers, as evidenced by the discovery of a necropolis containing the remains of men, women, and children dating back to Egypt's 18th dynasty. Archaeologists have made numerous other headline-worthy finds there in recent years, including statues of a power couple carved right into the rock, a man named Nefer Kewe and his wife found in modern-day northern Sudan. In addition to the ancient power couple, scientists have uncovered a waterlogged mass grave containing a soupy mess of human remains at Gabel el Silsila. Over 50 people, one-third of whom are children, were laid to rest in the now-flooded tomb. The adult male remains bear evidence of back problems and broken bones, indicating that they were accustomed to a life of hard labor. While they were given a dignified enough burial to show that they were not slaves, experts are puzzled as to why so many people were entombed together. Egyptologists say that the rediscovery of these people and their names would have been of great religious significance. By speaking their names and finding them thousands of years later, we are ensuring their place in the afterlife. Number 8. The Mysterious Skull of Akhenaten There are many mysteries surrounding ancient Egypt, including why they built the pyramids and what they used them for, and how did they know so much about engineering, farming, health, and astronomy? The civilization's creations were so elaborate and massive that some people believe the builders must have received some outside help, in the form of extraterrestrial visitors. In other words, aliens from outer space. If you watch or have heard of the show Ancient Aliens, apparently many people ask if ancient Egyptian artwork hides evidence of alien contact. Conspiracy theorists cite certain carvings and other artwork as evidence of this. Depictions of the pharaoh Akhenaten, for example, seem to show alien-like characteristics, like an elongated skull, an oddly shaped body, and a disproportionately large midsection. 
Yale School of Medicine professor Erwin Braverman says that he was often portrayed in sculptures and carvings with a thin neck, elongated head, large buttocks, breasts, and even a prominent belly, suggesting pregnancy. A user pointed out in Michigan State University's anthropology blog that Akhenaten's name translates to the disk of the sun, leading some people to believe that the so-called disk was actually a UFO. After all, if the ruler came from it, as mythology seems to imply, it would realistically have to be something other than the sun. One carving depicting Akhenaten's family raises even more questions. The children in the image seem to share their father's alien-like features, and the adults are wearing hats, which some people believe were used for concealing their elongated alien skulls. Without being aliens, it is entirely possible, however, that Akhenaten and his loved ones did have large conical skulls because they may have practiced something called artificial cranial deformation, which often involved deliberately elongating the skull. Egyptologists also believe that the Akhenaten family may have some genetic medical syndrome which would explain their strange head shape. Braverman says that Akhenaten's elongated head could be due to the gene defect causing craniosynostosis, in which the fibrous joints of the head fuse at an early age and disrupt the process of skull formation. Braverman said that a number of Akhenaten's relatives, including his daughters and two other 18th dynasty rulers, Queen Hatshepsut and King Tut, all had cranial abnormalities that mimicked craniosynostosis. Number 7. The Amarna Letters The earliest known examples of international diplomacy can be found in the Amarna Letters, a collection of 382 clay tablets dating back to the 14th century BC. They detail the correspondences between Egyptian pharaohs and their rivals, including Babylonian, Assyrian, Hittite, and Mitanni rulers and reveal the raw human emotions that came with competing tensions and delicate negotiations. The pharaohs and kings discuss exchanging princesses, marriages, trade, complaints between each other of how Egypt called the shots, and a letter to a queen from a lesser wife saying that she was supposed to get two solid gold statues, but had gotten gold-plated statues of wood instead. The letters also contain rules and conventions for these types of interactions, which represent the very first diplomatic policies. Known as the Amarna system, it facilitated the establishment of equality among the great powers of the time. They would begin the letters politely, and if they were the same status, they would call each other brother, that kind of thing. Those in power utilized the system for over two centuries as part of the empire-building process, and it served its purpose well by maintaining some semblance of peace and stability. The tablets span several 18th dynasty rulers' reigns, including Amenhotep III, Akhenaten, and perhaps Smenkare or Tutankhamun. Found in the 1880s after a series of chance finds in pits under an administrative building, the clay tablets were found in several batches, and luckily the archaeologists knew that they were important right away. They were written in Akkadian, not Egyptian, using cuneiform, and were mostly letters received by the Egyptians 3,000 years ago. A select few were actually written by the pharaohs themselves. Number 6. Origins of the Hyksos Researchers long believed that the Hyksos, a mysterious dynasty that ruled Egypt from 1638 BC to 1530 BC, were foreigners who invaded the area and took over. But recent research shows that this enigmatic group may have come from within Egypt all along. A recent study detailing the chemical analysis of teeth from Hyksos graves indicates that the supposed first foreigners to rule Egypt had already been there for generations when they came to power. Written records of the Hyksos are scarce. Manefo, a Ptolemaic priest who lived during the 3rd century BC, long after the Hyksos fell out of power, wrote that they invaded Egypt from the northeast after the Middle Kingdom fell around 1650 BC, during a time of turmoil and instability. Some hieroglyphs also talk of the Hyksos' conquest and reign. But it's hard to know what to believe, because succeeding dynasties destroyed records and spread propaganda about previous rulers, earning the Hyksos a reputation associated with disorder and chaos. Archaeological excavations at Avaris, the Hyksos capital, suggest that they originated in the Near East, according to lead study author Chris Stantis. The tombs with non-Egyptian burial customs were especially intriguing. Typically, males were buried with bronze weaponry in constructed tombs, without scarabs or other protective amulets like Egyptians would have been buried with. While the Hyksos were indeed a distinctive ethnic group, they arrived in Egypt in migratory waves. Most of the men whose teeth were examined in the study settled in the area prior to the Hyksos reign. 
Additionally, many of the corpses are female, and it appears as though the Hyksos people originated from various regions. These findings fly in the face of the notion that the group entered Egypt as a unified invading army and alerted scientists to the need to look further into the role women played in the Hyksos migration. Clearly, they did not invade Egypt. Number 5. The Gilded Mummy In mid-2018, an Egyptian-German team of archaeologists announced the discovery of a tomb complex containing a mummification workshop, mummies, sarcophagi, and a silver face mask gilded with gold. The site located in Saqqara contains several underground burial shafts, with some measuring over 100 feet deep. The silver mask, which contains eyes made from calcite, obsidian, and a black gemstone, dates back to sometime between 664 BC and 404 BC. It's one of several artifacts found at the site that are believed to be at least 2,500 years old. Team leader Ramadan Badri Hussein referred to the mask as a sensation, adding very few masks of precious metal have been preserved to the present day because the tombs of the most ancient Egyptian dignitaries were looted in ancient times. The mask belongs to a mummy found inside a badly damaged wooden coffin with an image of the goddess Mut on it. Researchers believe, based on what's left of the writing on the coffin, that the deceased was a priest who served Mut. At the mummification workshop, which is inside the remains of a mud brick and limestone building, the team found bowls and measuring cups bearing the names of substances that were used in the mummifying process, as well as two large basins that they believe were used for preparing mummies. Shafts beneath the workshop led to the mummies that were discovered at the site. At last update, excavations were ongoing, meaning there could be more exciting discoveries to come. Number 4. Mummified Lion Cubs In late 2019, the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities announced the first-ever discovery of two mummified lions in ancient Egypt. A team of archaeologists led by Mustafa Waziri, the Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, found the pair in a tomb full of cat statues and cat mummies in the necropolis of Saqqara. Measuring about three feet long each, the lions were not fully grown when they died. They were discovered near three other mummified big cats of unknown species, perhaps leopards or cheetahs. The lions and big cats were surrounded by 20 smaller feline mummies, as well as 100 cat statues made from wood, stone, and metal, including bronze. Experts dated the tomb to around 2,600 years ago during Egypt's 26th dynasty, based on an ebony statue of the goddess Neith they found inside the burial. In addition to these artifacts, archaeologists discovered what may be the largest scarab ever found in Egypt, measuring over a foot in diameter. Previous excavations turned up other cat burials and statues, indicating that the site was a popular place for cat worship during the 26th dynasty. Number 3. Magnificent Catacomb During the period of Roman rule in Egypt, a little less than 2,000 years ago, a woman named Demetria was entombed in an ornately decorated catacomb within the vast necropolis of Saqqara. Everything is going down in Saqqara. Discovered by an international team of Egyptian and Japanese experts in 2019, the burial contains a carving depicting Demetria in a white dress carrying grapes while a pet of an unknown species looks up at her. At the request of life science, Roman Egypt expert Roger Bagnall translated the Greek inscriptions visible in images of the tomb. One carving found on the image of Demetria in a white dress states, Demetria, daughter of Menelaus, granddaughter of Ammonia, worthy, farewell. Bagnall further explained that Ammonia was likely Demetria's paternal grandmother, and that her paternal grandfather may have been considered illegitimate since he isn't named in the inscription. Another carving shows the gods Thoth, Seth, and Anubis with wings over them, along with a statement that translates to, Of Menelaus, son of Philemon, servant and reverend. According to Bagnall, the inscription contains the rarely used name Therapeutes in describing Menelaus's servitude, indicating that he was serving gods rather than people. The team also found mummy remains, figurines, and two feline statues. Number 2. Mystery Mummy Archaeologists were stumped when in early 2019 they encountered a tomb along the Nile River near Aswan, belonging to a mysterious man named Tijit. Inside, they found the wooden fragments of the coffin that once held his remains, along with at least 34 mummies, including young children. Built sometime between the 6th century BC and the 4th century AD, the tomb also contained numerous artifacts, including vases, amphorae, vessels containing food, funerary mask fragments, a stretcher that was likely used for transporting bodies into the chamber, and a Ba bird statue depicting a bird with a human head. 
This type of creature was common for the time and represented a person's soul. A collection of mummy-making materials, including cartonage and bitumen, were found next to a lamp near the tomb's entrance. This is just one of an estimated 300 tombs located near the mausoleum of the Aga Khan, an imam or spiritual leader of Shia Ismaili Muslims. Who Tajit was, and whether his tomb corresponds with nearby burials, is unknown. Number 1. The Bent Pyramid In the Dashur Royal Necropolis, located roughly 25 miles south of Cairo, sit two pyramids, the Bent Pyramid and its satellite. Both are roughly 4,600 years old. The 4th dynasty pharaoh Sneferu commissioned their construction around 2,600 BC, during Egypt's Old Kingdom. The 331-foot-tall Bent Pyramid represents an architectural transition between the Dozer Steppe Pyramid, which was built between 2,667 BC and 2,648 BC, and the Maidum Pyramid, which dates back to around 2,600 BC, the same time the Bent Pyramid was built. It gets its name from its bent look, which results from the structure rising up from the ground at a steep 54-degree angle and then tapering off at a 43-degree angle near the top. Sneferu's final resting place is unknown, but researchers say it's possible that he was entombed inside the bent pyramid. In mid-2019, the site reopened to tourism for the first time since 1956 following an extensive restoration enabling visitors to enter at the pyramid's north face and travel through a 260-foot-long tunnel, which leads to two chambers. They can also explore the 59-foot-tall satellite pyramid, which may have been dedicated to Sneferu's wife, Hetafiris. Thanks for watching! What's your favorite thing about ancient Egypt? Let me know in the comments below, and remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!